the bail application of a 21-year-old murder and rape accused, Bafana Mahongela, continue in the Alexandra Magistrates Court in Johannesburg. Mahongela was arrested for the murder of 34-year-old Johannesburg teacher Kirsten Clates in October on the morning her body was discovered in a ditch at George Lear Park in Santon. The state has presented pictures that were taken from the scene of the crime that shows Mahungela following Clate uh, the morning her body was discovered. Other photos of Mahungela shows him wearing clothing belonging to Clate. Mahungela told the court that the only crime he's guilty of is that of stealing Clayton's clothing. Let's not take you live to those proceedings. And when we come back, we will be in conversation with um, advocate um, Romeo, who is going to speak to us about the strategy that has been employed by the defense in this case. To the blue t-shirt, which belongs to the deceased. The clothes which he threw in the drain, which were later discovered. We even showed that that t-shirt uh, powder is a sky blue t-shirt. It's of the value of approximately 250. That was not disputed. And even in the affidavits, nothing. Why am I following this trail of thought? It's precisely because I want to show this on the court. And I also wish to remind the honorable court about M1 and M2 which was only and the court has the originals we need to have copies of those M1 and M2 M1 refers to 1003 which is the timeline which does not marry tally or which is not consonant with what the affidavits are saying. So they don't speak to each other. Why? But they belong to the same case number, the same investigating officer, the same prosecutor in the same court in Alexander, who have the expertise of reading the docket and understand it fully well. But what's even disturbing about M2 which shows that there were no genital injuries, is that it's marked in red. And what's even more shocking about it is lack of honesty about it. It's marked in red. We had to push to get because the issue of pregnancy was only introduced during cross-examination. And had we not asked on what basis is the state relying on uh, on what's, uh, what's the basis of the state saying she was pregnant, we didn't have known. And even when we requested, they were still holding the document up until we requested it. And by sheer luck, we got it. And what would have happened if we never got there? The court wouldn't have known the truth to the prejudice of the accused. Now, what this case is not about is that it is not about murder premeditated, preplanned. It is not about robbery with aggravating circumstances. Why do I say that? Simple. Viva Voca evidence says, I found this person covered in a red. Dead facing the wall. Curious. Uh, that is Advocate Itumelang Masako, who is representing Bafana Mahungela in this murder case. And of course, we are now at the stage of the bail application. But what about the decisions that have been taken by the defense in this matter? Also considering um, that they've asked um, Bafana to actually take to the stand in his own bail application. At some point, even some people were asking whether or not he has a lawyer. And indeed, he does have a lawyer. That is Advocate Itumelang, who's currently um, giving closing remarks marks in this bail application that is underway at the Alexandra Magistrates Court. Let's now bring into this conversation for analysis a senior legal analyst and
member of the Legal Practice Council of uh, South Africa, Advocate Romeo uh, Ndabeleni. Advocate Ndabeleni, good afternoon. Thank you so much for making time for us. Let's start off with the strategy that was employed by the defense to allow Bafana to actually take to the stand and also go through cross-examination. Is this something that is uh, common in, when it comes to um, cases relating to the bail application, especially having the accused taking to the stand in his own defence, also considering, of course, that the evidence that could be um, that could be um, adjudicated during these proceedings could also be used during the trial. Yeah, uh, no. Good uh, morning, Adrian, and uh, thanks for having me and, and the listeners as well. Thanks, uh, no, for that question. Normally, in bail applications, what, what we do is that uh, bail application is normally done through an affidavit. And then that affidavit is short. It details the, you know, the, the details of the accused persons and state you know, uh, important information like his residence and you know, the reasons why the court should actually grant bail. And it doesn't go into the, the, the issues of, of a plea, whether the accused you know, is guilty or not. So I, know, I, I really don't know what transpired in this matter that resulted in you know, the accused being put in the box for you know, his own bail application. So it's, quite, it's not quite uh, you know, ordinary that normally an accused person is put in the box during their bail application because it affects you know, the status of their defense. What do you think the possibility then could be around uh, the strategy that has been employed by the defense? You know, Adrian, to be honest, I wouldn't know because I'm not privy to the fact of why he was in the first place put in the in the, in the witness box. As I've said to you, that you know, in normal bail applications, an affidavit is prepared, and that affidavit is short and and straight to the point. It doesn't go into the plea, you know, of the accused person whether the accused person is guilty or not guilty. So uh, what, that's why now you you have said it, you know, in our intro that. You know, we are now going to into into the charge itself and the you know, is cross examination because the accused has been exposed into the witness stand during their bail application. So I, I wouldn't know the, the reason uh, yeah. as I'm not the legal representative of this uh, you know, person why you know they decided to put him in uh, you know in the witness box. Yeah. Why is it then not advisable sometimes in criminal proceedings to put the accused in the witness box? And also considering here with this application as well, yesterday we heard from uh, the state prosecutor uh, cross-examining um, Bafana to such a point where Bafana actually admitted and said that the only crime that mm -hmm. I am guilty of is the crime of stealing her clothing and that's it. Yeah. No, you're, you're, quite, you're quite right, Adrian. The, 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 the issue is that when we don't want to put the accused under cross-examination during their bail, they're going to you know, you know, self-implicate themselves, and then and at the end of the day, you know, they make some admissions which you know, uh, you know, is against their right you not know, to be presumed innocent. So that is important to you know, to to state that the accused must be given an opportunity to actually deal with the bail issues without self-implicating themselves in. No, in any manner whatsoever. But now, what has actually happened is what you are actually saying. You made an admission that you know what is guilty, you know, for is you know, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z, which is not supposed to help do, you know, to happen during you no know, you know, hearing proceedings. So it's quite correct, and it becomes problematic when you put the accused in that box. But when you are dealing with it in an affidavit you avoid this kind of you know, no problems. Yeah. What then happens to the, ev to the evidence that is uh, being given during these proceedings once the trial itself then starts? Yeah, you know, in, 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 in order for you to refuse to, to refute that kind of evidence, obviously you have to say, no, no, the evidence is inadmissible, but inadmissibility of evidence is going to be a serious challenge as to how was that actually evidence tendered. And then you can see that he was put into the box he was sworn in and he was told you know, what was actually happening. So to then later come and change that the evidence that he has actually turned out cannot be used against him is going to be a, a mountain to climb, you know, that the evidence has become inadmissible. So it is admissible evidence in so far as, you know, uh, is concerned in terms of the admissions that he has actually made. And the state, you know, the state will definitely use those admissions you know, against him, you know, in the trial. Because now... As you have said, you know, Adrian, the trial has not started, but already this accused is implicating himself. And it normally happens when the accused does not have 
any legal representation. And then, but now in this case, when there's a legal representation, you have to employ a strategy where you, know, you do it via an affidavit. But as I've said to you, I don't know the reasons why he ended up in a witness stand himself. Yeah. Uh, do you think that this has weakened the defense's case, but also taking into consideration yesterday um, the autopsy report that has been presented on behalf of the state indicating that uh, Kirsten Clates um, was not raped, at least from the examination that was done. However, though, one of the charges that uh, Bafana currently faces is that of rape. Yeah, look, uh, no, in, in, in a criminal matter, you know, the state must prove their case beyond reasonable doubt. So the evidence you know, uh, no, that has been found must be used by the state to link the accused to the crime. So insofar as no, no, those matters are concerned, the state still has a duty to go all out to make you know, sure that they have got evidence that can lead and secure a conviction to prove that this person who has been brought you know, before the court has committed that offence. If the state can prove beyond reasonable doubt that the accused is guilty of that crime, then definitely he's going to be found guilty you know, of the charge. So the honor still rests rest on, you know, on, on the state. And then now, you know, as far as that matter is concerned, the evidence that they have seem to point towards the accused that they have you know, you know, in the box. And that is what we call circumstantial evidence. But if that evidence can be married with real evidence that link into the crime, that is when the state will be able to secure a proper conviction against the accused person. Okay, so now also now considering where exactly we are in this matter and all of the admissions that have been made so far in this case, would you say that the accused, or rather the defense itself, um, has shot itself in the foot? Because of course the state can come and say, well, we're going to at, at least withdraw the case um, or the charge of rape. However, though, we're going to continue with the other charges. And we know that once the state presents its case before um, a court, it always says that with the possibility of additional charges or an alternative yeah. charge. You are quite correct. They are 50% no, no, no closer to a conviction because, like you're saying, they can withdraw the other charges and profess the charges that you know, you know, will stick against him. And you know, as we have already said, he has made that admission. And if you turn around you know, and, and, then, and then say that that admission is inadmissible, you must, you know, under the law of evidence, and you know, you know, demonstrate why you're saying that you know, that evidence is inadmissible and is going to be a, a very difficult task. But if you have done it through and uh, an, an affidavit, you are going to say that the accused is facing this charge. He's not going to plead, no, 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 uh, no, to the charge in avoiding to self implicate himself and then deal with the merits of the matter when the charges are being put against you. So you are quite correct to say they can withdraw the charge that they know that will not stick and remain with those ones that are going to stick. And for that, he has already delivered himself halfway no, no, through, through to, to a conviction. Um, just finally, with regards to the fairness of the um, the matter, the, this is now the bail application, but of mm. course then the trial is going to be there as well. Uh, Bafana saying that um, his rights were not read out to him um, as he was being arrested. Do you think that that could have an implication at all around the credibility of the state's case? Yeah, no, 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 no. It, it, it depends on the circumstances. Definitely the rights of the accused must be read to the accused, you know, in, in, in terms of the, of the constitution. And then that implications of the right of him being read, how far did it actually go, you know, in, in his matter? And then uh, for me, you know, you know it, it might not you know, find any merit because at the end he had a legal representation, you know, when he you know, was going throughout the proceedings. So if, you know, throughout the proceedings and the trial, he didn't have a legal representation, maybe it was going to have, you know, a, 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 a serious impact. So those are procedural aspects of the of the matter and there are many people that are you know, arrested without their rights being read and when they get to the police station when the statement is being taken the police actually read their rights to them so i don't know that whether that was done at a later stage so when we go through the trial then we'll make a determination and then a finding can be made as to how adverse you know, that you know, that is adverse. Thank you so much for your time. Senior Legal Analyst and Member of the Legal Practice Council of South Africa Advocate uh, Romeo Ndabilin.